Of the four Gospels, one offers the most complex case in terms of discernment of authorship. But it's not so much a case of too little evidence as too many choices. As is typical of the New Testament books, there's no dispute in terms of internal evidence of attribution when it comes to John's Gospel. The critical question is raised by the external evidence of attribution, which John was the author. The early church writer Papias made this comment you see here. It's occasioned some debate over whether Papias is referring to two different Johns, one a disciple of the Lord, the other an elder, or whether he's referring to just one John twice, who is both a disciple and an elder. A couple of other external testimonies favor the first explanation and directly identify the John of the Gospel with the disciple. Others are equivocal, and none identify the author as merely an elder named John. In contrast, there's a fairly large collection of arguments attempting to show that the Apostle John could not be the author of his Gospel. A good number of these, though, sometimes still heard today, are badly out of date. For example, it used to be fashionable to declare that John's Gospel was Gnostic in orientation, meaning it reflected the beliefs of a mystical religious system in the ancient world characterized by the idea that one needed special knowledge, or gnosis, to be saved. That, in turn, was taken to mean John could not be the author. This fellow, Rudolf Boltmann, was really big on this idea, and he's so well known for making issues over John's Gospel that we'll use him as our bad guy the rest of the way. But anyway, as to this argument, since deeper study of Judaism has occurred since Boltmann's day, it's become clear that John is firmly rooted in Judaism, not Gnosticism. A more tangible objection appeals to Acts 4.13, and says that because this indicates John was illiterate, he couldn't have written a Gospel. Well, as we've noted in a prior vid, that won't wash because all John needed was a scribe. Beyond that, there's two points. One, illiteracy is a social problem, not an incurable disease. Even if John was illiterate in 33 AD, at the time of Acts 4.13, that doesn't mean he stayed illiterate for the next 30 years. But besides that, Acts 4.13 couldn't refer to literacy. For how could the priest have known from a speech that John and Peter couldn't write? All Acts 4.13 means is that Peter and John were not formally schooled, as would indeed be obvious. Not that they couldn't read and write. Then there's this objection. Within John, the figure of John is referred to as the disciple Jesus loved. The argument goes that a self-description like this seems a little, well, egotistical for John himself to write. But this incorrectly assumes modern social values on the text. Egotism, as we understand it, wasn't part of their social world. In contrast, people were expected to be bold and frank and honest about what they were. So, if Jesus did indeed truly love this disciple, then that disciple was free to say so. Mm -hmm. 
After this, the objections start getting a little silly and nitpicky. For example, some complain that John 1813 is wrong because it reflects a notion that there was a new high priest every year. Eh, yeah, right, look here. If I say, ah, 1977, Jimmy Carter was president that year, does that mean I think the presidents are elected every year? No, of course not. Even so, you have to know something else to appreciate the point John is likely making. Twenty-eight men held the office of high priest between 37 BC and 70 AD meaning most lasted an average of only 2.75 years. In that light, a phrase like, that year, might not have been an inappropriate way of putting things. Finally, we'll mention this verse, which is said to reflect a benediction cursing Christians that was used in synagogues only after 85 AD. Too late, some say, for John to have written, or else showing that the Gospel was not authored by an eyewitness like John. But look carefully. The benediction of 85 AD was a curse, not an expulsion. There was no ban on the attendance of synagogue by Christians. But the expulsion of deviant persons from a group was simply a typical process in the ancient world, so that there is no specific date past which Christians could have been subject to an expulsion. So once again, we see that by applying the standard test of authorship, the Gospel of John comes out as good as any ancient document. There's one other question we could address, and that's why John's Gospel is so different from the others. But we'll save that for another vid.